What I'd like to do in the short video is to show you how we fire up CrimeStat and analyze data using it. I'm going to start with the data in the file book, which is page 131 of Geographic Information Analysis. So let's start by looking at those data. So simply fire up Notepad and observe that the data are in two columns, that there's no header, and that in fact on both X, which is the first column, and Y, which is the second column, the coordinates range from 0 to 100. So those are our data. Our program, CrimeStat, uh, we've got in this case in the same directory, and I simply double click on that to fire up the uh, application. Uh, we start with this screen that tells us something about it, click into it, and what we get is the main control screen for CrimeStat 3. You can see, in fact, that what we've got is a data setup screen, that's where we arrive, a spatial description screen, a spatial modeling screen, a crime travel demand screen, and some various options. And within each one of those, there's an appropriate uh, set of uh, tabs that relate to functions that we might wish to perform within it. What we've got to do, first of all, is to set book as our primary file. So what we do is click on Select Files, and because book is an ASCII file, we need to first of all set the type to ASCII, and let's browse to find the data. I've got them in the same directory, you might have them somewhere else, but you can see I've got all three files here, and the one that we want is book, so we click on that and open it. Before leaving this section, though, it's important to know that we need to make sure that the separator is a space, that there is no header row, and that we have two columns. So in essence, that's a description of our data. So we can OK that and proceed uh, back at the data setup screen. What we next need to do is to define where the X and Y coordinates are, X and Y uh, in these two rows here. So X we know are in column 1 of our data, and Y we know to be in column 2. So we set those. Before leaving this screen, we need also to define the type of coordinate system, whether it be spherical in latitude, longitude, or whether it be projected as a Euclidean XY data space. In our case, they're projected, so we tick that box. The data units, in our case, are arbitrary, uh, they could be feet, they could be meters, they could be centimeters, whatever. But let's set them as meters in that case. In this case, so that's set up our screen. We don't our, our data. We don't need to do anything more uh, at this juncture. We could, if we wanted to, uh, define a reference file. And something I'm going to do is we can define the area of interest. Now, why that's important is because we might wish to have a different area from the uh, bounding rectangle of the data used in calculations or estimates of the intensity of the process. Well, we know, in fact, that our area is 100 by 100, so we've got 10,000 square meters uh, in which our data are placed. So let's set that at, at 10,000. The type of distance measurement we know to be direct. It doesn't use a network distance or a a so-called Manhattan distance. Don't worry over much about those. Let's now then go to spatial description and ask for the computation of the mean center and standard distance. All we do to that is click 